Hi, welcome to Sumer AP. Today I want to share with you an easy homemade naan bread and I'm going to do two recipes, one with a combination of spelt flour and one with strong white bread flour. It's easier than you think and you don't need to cook it in the oven, you just fry it in a fry pan. So if you'd like to see how I make my easy homemade soft naan bread that tastes like it's from a restaurant, come with me and let's see. So step one, I'm going to use my stand mixer because I've got it and it's easy and I'm lazy and I've got a dough hook on there. So I've got my flour all measured out. Just want to quickly talk about flour. I call it strong white bread flour because that's what it's called. And I use this one called very strong white bread flour. And the reason it is strong, it's got 14.9 grams of protein in it. So that means that the dough is more pliable and soft. And you're asking me, can you use all purpose flour or plain flour? The answer is yes. But just to compare, when I look at my packet here, that's got 10.5 grams of protein. So yes, it will work, but it won't be as soft and pliable. Glad that's all clarified. Let's throw all this flour in and I'll pop notes up above on cup measurements and ounces. So the flour goes in 500 grams, strong white flour. I'm using instant yeast just because it's convenient. Seven grams or two teaspoons, two teaspoons of salt. And I just pop it in, not near the yeast, but on the other side, we're going to do yogurt. I've got Greek yogurt. So two tablespoons of yogurt, two generous heaps of that. The other little trick is putting in oil. So two tablespoons of oil. I'm using just olive oil, but I've also made this with sunflower oil or vegetable oil. And the water I've got here is 340 mils of warm water. And what I do is I do 100 mils of boiled water and the rest just room temperature water. And then it's like the perfect temperature. So we throw all of that in and then we knead it for about eight to 10 minutes. And I like to put my timer on just so I don't lose track of time. And I usually start it on low and then I bump it up a little bit. This quantity will make about eight kind of naan breads, depending on how big you like them. And I like to use just my hands to shape them, but you can roll them with a rolling pin. What I love about this, it can be rustic, and it doesn't have to look perfect, and they still taste great. While that's mixing, I'm gonna prepare this bowl and just pop some oil in it, because I'm gonna transfer the dough in to here. So then I can show you my second version. And the other thing to prep is I like to use a damp cloth, say it's on plastic, and I just moisten a tea towel and throw it on the top and that covers it to let it prove. So let that do its thing. So it's been about nine minutes and we're almost there. I think with this style of bread, we're not going to get the bowl totally clean, but we're almost at the stage where it's really, look at that, it's really stretchy and pliable. So what I might do, it's at the, yeah, nine and a half minute mark. It's gonna take it out of this bowl. And this style of dough is a little bit, it is more sticky than a regular bread. So don't be alarmed if you think, oh no, my dough is sticky and I can't get it out of the bowl in one bowl. <laughs> it's better to have it sticky. It's gonna be super moist when we cook it. So let's throw that in here. So I'm gonna cover this with my damp tea towel and pop this to one side. And I'm gonna set my timer for 60 minutes because we're aiming to double that in size. So let me just do a quick clean up and then we'll do the second recipe. So everything's clean. I'll put my clean hook back on. So recipe two, I'm doing spelt flour my favorite flour, and I'm gonna do a combination of whole grain spelt flour and white spelt. I was gonna do 50-50, but I'm kind of experimenting in front of you today. I'm gonna to do 300 grams of white spelt and 200 grams of whole grain spelt. So I'll pop that in. And what I love about the brand that I use here in the UK, I use a brand called Craig's & Co. Looks like this. I'm not getting paid by them or sponsored by them. Their protein content is super high. Their white spelt is 14.3 grams. And for some reason, their whole grain spelt is 16.9. I 
Comparing that to another brand that I sometimes use called Doves, let me just grab my packet out. So they have a white spelt flour, their protein content is 10 grams. So in this bowl, we'll do the same quantity of yeast again. So seven grams or, whoops, half of that went on the bench. So I'm gonna, just gonna grab a little bit more out. That shouldn't have happened. So I think I've lost a few grams on the bench from not watching what I was doing. And I've got this packet here. So what I'm gonna do is add another half a teaspoon just to make up for the bit I lost. And two teaspoons of salt again, just on the opposite side. I've got my warm water sitting here ready and waiting. So same quantity as before. That's about 340 to 350 mils. Now I'm gonna monitor, monitor this because we may need extra water because I'm using spelt flour. Spelt flour tends to soak up the water a lot more. So you may need some more water. The other thing is we may, uh, we won't need to knead it as much. I've been doing loads of research lately and from all the experts, they say you don't need spelt flour as long as regular flour. So we're gonna do two tablespoons of oil again and I'm gonna try and make this version vegan and I'm going to experiment with using oat yogurt. First time I've ever used it. So let's see how it'll go. Two generous tablespoons. And let's knead that for about five to seven minutes. I'm gonna pop my timer on five minutes. Actually, that time is going for the other dough, so let's put this one on. Hey Siri, set a timer for five minutes. Once again, start it on low. And in this bowl, I'm gonna add some oil to get this ready. What I was gonna say, you can experiment and use total whole grain spelt flour, but what I find is it becomes the bread's a lot drier and not as valuable, so I like using a combination of white spelt and whole grain spelt. The five minute timer went off and I almost think it's done. I think it's quite stretchy and I don't want to over knead it, so let's give that a go and I'll grab it out of this bowl. Whoops! I didn't attempt to add any more water, I just thought it was looking good enough with how much I added in. I've got another tea towel, just happened to have two red tea towels. And I'm gonna also let that rest for one hour. So Siri, hey Siri, hey Siri, set a timer for 60 minutes. So it's been an hour and we're back with our dough. And look at that, whoops, got a bit stuck. It's doubled in size. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to add some oil to my hands because it's so much easier when your hands are moist or you can add water and we're going to divide it into eight balls and roughly around 120, 120 grams each. Hey Siri, hey Siri, what's 900 grams divided by eight? Okay, Siri said it's 112.5 grams each. So let's divide that. So I'm gonna be less than accurate. So we don't really stretch it. I just kind of make it into a ball with a little bit of flour and throw it onto a tray. I've got a tray here with some baking paper. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna freeze two balls. So what I've got here is a little takeaway container with some paper on the bottom and then I'll put some paper on top. I'm gonna to pop that in the freezer. So I'm gonna put two in the fridge in a container like this and I have a lid and I'll keep them for tomorrow. Okay, what I've got, I've got four on my tray now. I've got really sticky fingers. I probably should have had a jug of water on standby. Let me just wash my hands. Hands are washed. So the ones we're gonna to cook tonight, I'm going to pop a damp cloth back over those. Rest those for 10 minutes. The ones I'm going to put in the freezer, I'm going to just pop some more paper on top. That's just so it doesn't stick to my container. And I'm going to pop them in the freezer. I reckon they'll last about a month. Um, and then the other two for tomorrow, I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of oil on top of those. And I'm going to store them in the fridge straight away. Okay, our spelt flour dough is ready. 
I'm going to try and improve on my method in front of you. So I've grabbed my breadboard and I'm putting my spelt flour on the breadboard. I don't think I'm going to fuss with weighing it on the scales this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water to my hands and see if that helps. So let's grab all this dough out. Oh, one thing I forgot to get. I forgot to get my tray out. Get my tray out. I bought myself some pre-cut paper, which I was very excited about. So I'm going to knock the dough out, knock some of the air out, and I'm just going to use my dough scraper and divide it in half. Less handling, less mess, rustic sizes. Roll it into a ball, my hands are wet. So much easier. I'm not even going to flour, I'm just going to pop it on here. So scratch the first method, this one's so much better. And I think I need, I'll need two trays, so. Even though it's, I've used spelt flour, it's really lovely and moist. So you just kind of put it into this loose ball. Much easier, so much easier. I've run out of storage containers, so the ones that I'm gonna pop in the fridge overnight, I'm just gonna cover them with plastic actually. I don't like using too much plastic, but sometimes there's no other solution. So I've drizzled some olive oil. So the next step is we're ready to cook. So I've got a heavy based fry pan. So I'm just doing it on my induction hob so I can show you front on. And I've used olive oil, but you can't kind of, it's hard to fry with olive oil at a high heat. So I recently tried my wok oil, which is my sesame oil, and that was a lot better. So you just drizzle a tiny amount, just so the pan's coated, but you don't want your bread swimming in it. And I love the smell and the flavor of sesame oil. So I'll let that heat up for about five minutes. It's feeling like it's hot enough. I can feel the heat coming off it. So I'm going to grab my olive oil back and drizzle some olive oil over the dough. On my hands, you can either use a rolling pin, and I would suggest adding some oil to the rolling pin to make your circle or your rectangle. But what I like to do is just do a rustic freeform nun. So I just stretch it with my hands. You can either stretch it so it's really thin. I kind of like doing it so it's still a little bit thick. Pop it in the pan. And it only takes a few minutes on either side and you have this magical, soft, restaurant style naan. And I'll just squish it a little bit. I was a bit early flipping that over then. The aim is to have it brown on either side. Kind of ends up having this kind of I don't know, leopardy, zebra-y spots? Zebra? No, leopard spots. And I'll squish it with my spatula. Just increase the heat on my fry pan. I'm just looking at my clock. I'm going to try for three minutes on either side. That's more like it. Let me zoom in. I think that one looks good. So I'm going to do the other ones. I just drizzled the oil on the top, but you can do either side. So I'm just stretching it, trying to make sure I'm in the screen. How about we do this one a little bit bigger and then flop it into the pan. Okay, that was two minutes and I think that's good. Now the pan's really hot. That's kind of perfect. See how we've got that kind of zebra-like, leopardy colouring? Squish it down. Meanwhile, I've got my spelt ones here. I'm just going to prep those and drizzle some olive oil on those. So they're all done. Let's start cooking the spelt ones. Now the pan looks still hot and oiled, so I'm just going to stretch the spelt ones out. The dough feels lovely and pliable. I'm on the home stretch and I'm doing the last two spelt naans and they look amazing. 
I'm really impressed. I think the oat yogurt has done its job. So I strongly recommend doing the water method. So have a jug of water on standby, pop your hands in and roll the dough. So much easier. So I decided to put my fry pan lid on top of the bread just to keep it a little bit warm. So there's all my homemade naan cooked. Here we have two versions, my spelt with a little bit of whole milk and my regular. I'm getting hungry. It's dinner time here. We're going to have some freshly made bread. I said it's naan, but it also can be like a Greek, Greek bread. I've got some olives and some dips and I'm going to try the white one. Mm. Fresh bread, not in the oven, quickly made on the cooktop. Yum, yum, yum. And the spelt one for all my spelt viewers, lovely and soft. The oat yogurt worked. Mm. Give this a go. Hit the thumbs up if you've liked my video. Give this a go at home. It's so simple and so easy to have delicious, fresh, homemade naan at home. Homemade naan at home? An easy way to have delicious homemade naan. Let me know if you try the white version with bread flour or the spelt version. And I'll pop a few other recipes up above. I've got a focaccia, a ciabatta, spelt rolls. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go away and have dinner and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.